we're going to have a demonstration of a person in Seattle remotely controlling a micro air vehicle flying on an open field in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So MAVVIEW is an acronym that stands for Micro Aerial Vehicle Visualization of Unexplored Environments. And the purpose of this project is cre to create a system that allows an operator, a very minimally trained operator, to be able to operate a small UAV or MAV micro area vehicle um, without very much training. Because the system has been designed to be operated by a person with such little training, we can move away from uh, the more traditional unmanned air vehicle command and control systems that require that an operator micromanage the behaviors of the vehicle. Uh, so instead of having to focus on the details of maneuvering a vehicle around an environment, the operator can concentrate on a more mission-relevant uh, level of command and control. So there are two main methods of control there. There's the one, uh, the waypoint control, where you tap on, uh, on a map that's given on the iPhone. So you tell it where to go by tapping a location, and it'll go from where it is to that point. Um, and there's also the nudge control, which is it has a little forward-facing camera view that's displayed on the iPhone and then you can tilt the, tilt the iPhone in the direction that you want to move the vehicle. We've set the system up so that the iPhone connects into the cell network through a Wi-Fi hotspot capability. And on the other end, the vehicle is hooked up to a ground station which is also hooked in to a wireless hotspot. So the, the vehicle and the iPhone are then communicating over the internet and this allows us to send whatever commands we want. My interaction with uh, Missy Cummings and her team at the HAL lab at MIT, the Humans and Automation Lab, is through the Boeing University collaboration. Um, and through this collaboration, we're able to interact with uh, universities, MIT being one, where we can uh, leverage the kind of research that they're able to do in their labs to support work that we're doing um, here in our labs. It's really exciting to work on a technology like this that has a real world use. It's very applicable. Um, and it's fun to work on both the hardware and software aspects. So working with the real system, um, having to deal with the system when it does break is you know, one of the challenges, but it's certainly something that anyone who deals with real systems in the field faces. So it's, it's been a good experience to work through these challenges and see what it really takes to make a system like this work.